All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Wanderhoof podcast. Yay. So, Shannon, what are we talking about today? Um, well, I did ask over on Instagram what people wanted to hear, and we got a question mm-hmm. about what are what do our what are our plans after we are done traveling? Mm-hmm. And are we courtesy of Sean McKenney, thank you for the question, sir. Yeah, are we looking around the country for a place to stay? So Yeah. I thought that was a really good question because um, originally I think we wanted to do this RV life and travel life because we didn't know where we wanted to live. Yeah. That kind of what is what sparked it, which is really interesting because, I mean, I've, I love doing it for so many other reasons now. Yeah. Than just looking for a place to live. Um, I think like with uh, COVID-19 and... We've been super blessed to be in a house for pretty much, what, like the last month? Yeah. It's been like a month um, staying in this house that my parents own in Florida. Thanks, mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And also, happy birthday, mom. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Happy birthday, (laughs) Steve. Had to throw that out there. But it's interesting because she actually asked me the other day, like, are you guys getting domesticated? And then I know your brother, Eric, Mm -hmm. asked, like, oh, well... Do you miss being in a house now that you've gotten to be in a house for a while? I was like, hell no. It's like, no, (laughs) which is so interesting because it's like, yes, I've been feeling like getting more domesticated, I guess, over the last month, but not in good ways. Like, I've definitely been watching a lot more TV yeah, and a lot more like trash TV. I don't think oh, like, like when we're on the road, we hardly watch anything. Like we'll watch an episode or two at night of whatever show we're watching at the Mostly moment. Mostly anime. Mostly anime. Not always though. Sometimes like the, you know, the more popular shows and whatnot. But, yep. but like with living in a house all day, every day, even though we still have everything that we love to do to work on and we've been working really hard on all of that there's something about being sedentary and I mean I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that we haven't actually left the house since we've been here either for anything other than walks around the neighborhood so we have not even left the neighborhood since we got here so I'm sure that plays a part in it too it's not just the fact that we're living in a house now but yeah I definitely I don't really like it it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I, I way prefer being on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, man, the RV was like 90 degrees the other day. I went out there to grab something. I just sat down on the couch and I was just like, dude, I really miss being in here. Yeah. There's like, I don't know. It sounds like contradictory because like sometimes traveling can be so chaotic, you know, with everything. Mm-hmm. But it definitely like simplifies. Like, yeah. like I, I just like, because I'm usually working on so many different things, right? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm working on my book or I'm working on, uh, like Wanderhoof stuff or, you know, we've got all these projects that I'm juggling and there's something about like my time management, like while we're traveling where it's like, okay, this is driving time. This is parking time. This is Taylor time. This is, you know, Coda time. It's like dumping takes time. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. So Adventure time. So there's like this time management process that you just have to do in yeah. order to survive. But like with the quarantine and with being here, it's kind of like, your time is like less structured. Yeah, it's less structured. And I, I'm one of those people that like I need that external pressure mm-hmm. to kind of help me keep myself organized. Yeah. And so basically when, you know. When you're on the road, it's like you only have a certain amount of time and like certain days where you're dedicating to different things. Anyway, let's get back to the question too. What <laughs> what, what was our plans after this? Well, uh, I don't know. Honestly, like this, like uh, where I was going with that whole COVID-19 stuff is like, this has showed me that I don't really want to anytime soon find a place to live and stop. Like I don't, at at first, you know, we weren't sure if we were going to love the RV life. We had no idea, which makes sense. We've never done it before. So we were always looking at like, okay, well maybe we'll do this for six months to a year. And it's like now there's no really end time in sight for me. I don't. Yeah. Look forward to that. Yeah. And that's true too, is like, you know, we, we kept a running list of places that we, when yeah. we, that we passed through that are really cute that we're like, Hey, yeah. let's eventually maybe look at maybe living here. Mm-hmm. So we have that list that we're looking at yeah. like as we travel, but there's so many places that, you know, 
because you're moving at such a speed too, like through these states that you're not getting to see all of it and you're not getting to really take in the, uh, um, the, the small towns and the nuances of everything. And so it's like, it really would take a lot of time to mm-hmm. kind of go through the country and visit places and, um, yes. you know, kind of give each place the time that it deserves. And so yeah. we're realizing now that the six months to a year that we had in mind initially, which we knew was loose at best, isn't right. really going to um, cut it now. Mm-hmm. So we're looking um, at really, this is such a, l- let me break this question down too. There's the personal aspect of us traveling, which is finding a place that we, may, we might want to settle down yeah. and enjoying the journey and just, you know, we love to travel. But then there's the professional aspect of what we're doing too, which is that we have very high hopes for Wanderhoof, like we're constantly trying to get better yeah as filmmakers and cinematographers and photographers and we're trying to eventually get our content to a place that feels tv worthy right not that we want to be on tv but we want someone we there's no other way of saying it but we want our content to fill that gap that was created when anthony bourdain kind of passed away Mm -hmm. right like there is that there's that gap in entertainment that is it's travel, but it's just raw yeah. and it's and it's through a unique perspective, which I think we have. And and it's and it's produced at a certain level. And I, and I really want that to be our kind of content. So where would I like to see this channel go is something that we've talked about a little bit, but international, like yeah, eventually, eventually, sure. eventually moving outside of the U.S. to other countries Um you know, and exploring various regions. Like mm-hmm. I have your friend from college, Kendra, she's traveling uh, with her fiance. No, they're married. Oh, they're full on married. Okay, <laughs> full on. Okay, cool. My bad. Zach. Zach, yeah. So they're they're actually traveling through um, uh, like Southeast Asia and, yeah. and various places, like so exploring. Cool. And she's not really doing a lot of on social media, but she's just having a great time mm-hmm. and watching what they've been doing. It's like you know, that's something I'd really like to do too. Yeah. I've always wanted to travel. So, yeah. We're exploring our own backyard first and then hopefully have plans of growing it outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think that um, kind of content is on YouTube at this point in time. I think there's like, you know, there's travel films where it's just like shows off beautiful locations. And then there's like vlogs where it's like, hey, look at me doing all these cool things. Yeah. But there's on YouTube, it doesn't really feel like there's a travel channel. Yeah. We really wanted to like, we really wanted to take all these different influences. And that's, I mean, for those of you watching our travel videos, like it's pretty obvious that we're still trying to figure out like a a formula and a style and stuff like that. But that's because we're juggling a lot of different influences. Mm -hmm. Right. And we, we want to find a way we're determined to find a way to make Mm -hmm. them all fit together and work. And so, um, once we kind of get that down, uh, that's also a reason why we're thinking about maybe posting every two weeks now as opposed to a week to really take the time to explore our options when creating these videos, making sure the best right. they can be. Right. And then like back to breaking down the question, like you said, that's our like business side of things. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that was a great question. We don't really know where this road will take us. Yeah. At this point, we just want to get back on the road, period. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, speaking of trash TV, uh, love is blind, huh? <laughs> what a great show. What's the show that you just watched on Netflix? It's uh, like Love It, Married at First Sight. Married right. at First Sight. All right. I don't know about that one, but if you haven't seen Love it is Blind great. on Netflix, uh, I'm like a huge fan of reality TV. Well, okay. I, and it's so, a great show. Yeah, I liked both shows for two different reasons. Yeah. Love is Blind was really interesting because like the people got to know each other before ever seeing each other. Mm-hmm. And so they they still picked the person ultimately that they, you know, were going to marry. And so that was really interesting to see. Um, I think it was, it was interesting because it worked out a lot better for those couples. Shannon, don't spoil it. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but married at first sight was completely opposite where it was experts that went through like eight weeks of interviewing all these different people Mm -hmm. and they matched the person. So it was really interesting because like applying it to us and our life, like if we were on the show Love is Blind, mm-hmm. we for sure would have ended up together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we like to think. No, I know so. <laughs> but the other show, Married at First Sight, there's no way we would have ended up together mm-hmm. because these experts 
they're looking for similarities and compatibilities. Yeah, on that, paper, we're, we, at least, especially when we first started dating, like on paper, exact opposite. Yeah, that we could not, there was nothing similar <laughs> about us, mm-hmm. you know? So like if we went on married at first sight, like there's no way we would have been put together. But it was interesting too because I think those some of the couples found that although they were super compatible on paper, there was just not that deeper level for them to be didn't able to move that, forward. Didn't have that chem chem. Yeah. Didn't have that chemistry. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think like experts really can can say who's going to have the chemistry because that's intangible. We got the intangibles. We at, got the intangibles. As like NFL draft picks, you know, like so we got the intangibles. <laughs> um, watched the Tom Brady documentary on YouTube. That was awesome. I don't really you have did? anything to say about it. Yeah, I watched it. I got up early one morning and I was just like, I got my coffee and I settled in. And I went to go work on some stuff and I was, and then it popped up and I was just like, you know what? I'm in the mood to watch some, just some sports documentary type stuff at four in the morning. So I wound up watching this Tom Brady documentary and it was killer, dude. It was killer. Really, really Tug at those heartstrings. Yeah, it did. You know, I get, <laughs> I get up early so I can have a good cry in my coffee. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Let's see what else. Working on Wonder Hope stuff. Yeah. Watching more Netflix than we probably should. Yeah, which I don't like, but it's like, man, once you're in it, you just can't stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, after this, after we uh, leave Orlando, our plan is to go south to Miami, yeah. where we have one of our um, older clients that we'd like to kind of meet and hang out with and kind of explore the keys. I've never been south type of, of like Orlando. Yeah. So I really want to go down there and check it out. But Except for Sarasota. Yeah. And then the thing is, too, is heading back up north once this whole thing blows over eventually, inevitably, is that um, we have so much stuff to do along the East Coast that I'm really excited about because I've never seen any of the East Coast whatsoever. Like yeah. the only place I've been on the East Coast is Orlando. Yeah. You know. I'm really excited to explore the East Coast, but at the same time, like... I don't know. I, f- I feel completely like it's impossible to make any future plans like whatsoever. Like everything is so tentative and it's tough. It's tough to know what's coming next. Yeah, this whole thing sucks, man. Yeah. It's terrible. I mean, it's horrible for so many people on so many different levels. And like for us, we are super freaking blessed and like can't complain but at the same time, it's like that uncertainty that we're all going through is very difficult to, it's brutal. to handle. You know, and something something worth mentioning, too, is not that anybody probably cares about, like, our opinion and not that we'll dive too deep into it. But I think that this whole thing has definitely kind of brought to light the unreliability of that kind of supply chain that we all rely on for information oh gosh it's It's, impossible it's been just absolutely startling at the amount of mistakes that have been made and and like the the lack of there's no organization there's no real information well there's just there's just no one being like an adult like on 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 like the leadership level that's saying like hey we don't have all the facts we don't have all the information just hold tight and we'll we'll let you know when we know Mm -hmm. It, it was It's all like, okay, we think this, This so we're going to push this information. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, now we think this, so we're going to push this information, and it's overwhelming and confusing, and nobody knows what's going on. And so, like, the thing thing for me has been, very quickly, is I got got pretty numb to the idea of, like, looking at the latest info and being like, oh, this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. Like, when they said... You don't need to wear masks. That's stupid. I was like, well, I'm going to wear a mask. And they're now they're mm-hmm. saying, like, you don't need to wear gloves. Like, that increases your weight. It's like, dude, we don't, we still don't know anything. Yeah. It's like, we don't know anything. Yeah. You know, like, the, the, there's been extremely little actual publications, like academic publications and like research studies on the information because it's so new. Well, it's very interesting you know? because um, I've recently been told by like family members that you can only catch it in certain ways like your chances of catching are so small and this is how you can catch it so i was like okay i want to believe that i want to believe that's true so just this morning and last night actually i was going online and wanting to find out for myself how does this thing spread how can you catch it i can't find anything 
I can find things from a month ago and we all know that things have drastically changed and the information that we have is so different from well, what only, we had a month ago. Not only how it spreads, but like just, just the foundation of like what it is and like the problems that it caused. Like this was believed to be like a pure like bronchial like lung infection. I know. Type and now disease. they're finding that it's causing strokes. Not just strokes, but multiple blood clots, which is apparently unheard of. Multiple brain multiple brain blood clots specifically and in, in blood pe- clots in other places too. Yeah, we'll talk about the age demographics that that's affecting. Thirties, forties and fifties. Th- so thirties, forties and fifties. And these are people that have got coronavirus mm-hmm. and some of them were asymptomatic, not yep. showing any symptoms whatsoever. They didn't even know they were sick. Yeah. And so th- that's my point, though, is just like the amount of, you know, bullshit. And there's so much. It's it's like this trickle down information uh, system that we're relying on. And it's like the telephone game. You know, one person says one thing in oh, someone's yeah. ear and then the information changes by the time it it's actually reaches. It's impossible to know the it's masses. true. And it's so it's so unreliable at this point. There's been. I'm not the idea that we're opening up places and that people need to get back to work. I understand that. I understand it. But like do that because you know, not that I recommend you do, but do that because you feel like it's the right thing to do. Do not base any decisions right now on the latest and greatest, the latest and greatest information because it's, it's probably going to be irrelevant by next week. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's so many people like coming out now too, saying that like, well, you know, my friend's dad's friend died or got like in a horrible car accident, went to the hospital, died in the hospital, got tested for COVID-19, was positive so they're saying he died of COVID-19 like I hear so many stories like that and it's like okay well are those do, do, are those people telling me the truth you know so are the numbers getting like that much skewed yeah I mean it's that's like, the thing too is in the grand <sighs> scheme of things the, I mean I can't I can't really drive this I don't know who is going to really care to hear about this guy I think everybody's in the same boat yeah like everybody knows the information is extremely careful though extremely a lot of unreliable. people don't think we're all in the same boat <laughs> Well, I would I would hope that we are. I hope that people are making responsible decisions and and staying home and social distancing and doing the things that they need to do to be responsible. Because anybody that feels like they know more than you know what's going on, they don't. And yeah. if, and even the people that are like really up to date on the information coming out, you still don't know that much because mm-hmm. they don't know that much. So the the best thing that anybody can have right now is kind of the humility to understand that they don't really understand anything mm-hmm. and that acting in the most responsible way and in your own and everyone else's best interest around you is just to stay safe, like keep your distance and, and obviously not be going like right now they're opening up all the beaches in Florida. And I saw some pictures of just like, just people just crowded. And, and the thing, hold on. The one thing that I have to drive home here is, okay. and the, the, re, the, the reason why it frustrates me and I even brought it up is because like, I love history. I love studying history. Um, I'm a big fan that to understand the future, you need to understand the past. And if you look at like past pandemics and epidemics, this whole idea of opening the country up too early and a second wave or something like that happening, I mean, there's historical precedence for that. that. We, like this is, it, it's an, it's insane to me that we're that. And I I have a, I have a sympathetic position towards those people that are like, well, we need to open it back up. I need to get right. to work. I am I understand that, but I there's also this balance of, well, it's not just about you. It's about your neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you and your neighbor. It's about your neighborhood. You know, Mm -hmm. it's about your community and it's about the, the, the whole picture, the bigger picture. And it's this thing that just like stresses me out because it's like, dude, nobody knows anything, Yeah, you know, and people are basically don't have the proper information to educate themselves and, and make rational, responsible decisions. So everyone's acting from this rational place of, you know, being desperate, being in a desperate situation position and it's like that's not where we need to be during a pandemic whatsoever and i don't feel like the powers that be are doing enough to remedy that no you know they're just all fighting amongst each other yeah anyway that's it's a, all that, messed up that's as political as i'd like to get but yeah that's just a not so gentle reminder just be responsible stay safe and um you know make make the best decisions you can for those around you and yourself yeah, and it's just kind of like an insight too as to so many people asking about like, what are our plans and are we going to be heading home after this, which we don't have a home really. But, <laughs> um, and it's like, I don't know. You know, I've been asked like, oh, are you going to be back in town for holidays? It's like, I don't know. Oh, are you going to be back in town for so-and-so's birthday? I don't know. <laughs> you know, this all plays into that. That's that's part of the reason why I think that there's like this 
underlying frustration with everybody is that no one can really look to the future to the future no one can plan past you know next week yeah because no one knows what it's going to be like yeah just have no idea yeah and it seemed and and i think like the worst part too is like oh it's not like i can't plan for next week but it's like who knows when you'll be able to plan for next week again like yeah. that's the biggest thing where it's like there's no end in sight you know they're just talking about like oh it's gonna get better for now and we're gonna open up the country for now and then it's probably gonna get really bad in the fall it's like, okay, well, the fall is like how many months away? So you're telling me I can't even plan, you know, six months out? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be able to make plans in six months still. You know, like your mom, she, like, we were supposed to all be on family vacation together right now. And she's... That's why we're in Florida. That's Because our why family is supposed to be here joining us. Yeah, which clearly didn't happen. Um, but it's like, she's like, okay, well, you know... I really want to all get together and like make a plan to get together. It's like, yeah, I totally want to do that. When can we do that? When can we do that? I have no idea. <laughs> you know? I know that it, right now would be the best time to go ahead and make a uh, cross country trip when it comes to like gas prices, but you know, we really <laughs> yeah. can't. Uh, we don't know. But anyway, yeah. this is just, uh, you know, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Um, you know, don't mean to get too heavy handed on some of this stuff. Hopefully it didn't come off too preachy, but we're all in this together. So stay yeah. safe and remember, you know, use those around you as a resource to talk to and vent your frustrations because we're all feeling the same, I think, right about now. Yeah. Yeah. Homebodies and introverts unite. We're all in our happy place. But, you know, we got to take care of those extroverts because they're, they're losing it. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's it's just extroverts, though. Like... I wouldn't say that I'm very extroverted, but people that like to have a plan, even like people like myself where I know plans change and things are going to fall through. But the fact that I can't even make that plan to make myself feel like I have some control and there is some structure, that's the hard part. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's. That's it. That's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Check out the video on Wednesday. Wander hoof out. Wander hoof out. Keep <laughs> wandering, keep hoofing. <laughs> <laughs>